Hey, what's up YouTube? Down to fix it, man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm going to show you how to change your front brake pads, your front brake caliper, and your front brake rotors here on a 2010 Jeep Wrangler. This is an unlimited Sahara edition. Now let me show you what happened here. If you can see that, the caliper piston here blew out. And the reason that happened is because the rotor is worn down so far that the piston popped out here and all their brake fluid has gone out and, and really this vehicle wouldn't even stop. And the owner just was able to get back home using just the uh, emergency brake. So this was towed in and dropped off. Now, if you're not changing out the brake caliper, what you would typically do is just start by getting a screwdriver in here and pull this towards you to pry that caliper piston back in. Now, of course, we're not gonna try to save this. This is blown out and and we're just going to replace it. These should be replaced in pairs. Even though only this one blew out, we're going to swap out both calipers. Now we don't necessarily have to take off the caliper slide pins here or the slide pin bolts. We could just take off the bracket bolts, but just for the sake of showing you how I'm going to take off these slide pin bolts first, those are a 13 millimeter. Sometimes you can loosen these uh, just by breaking these loose and other times the slide pin itself, which also has a, a hex bolt, looks like it's pretty close to a 15. It might be a little smaller than that. This is a little loose, but this is just a tool that I've ground down to make it thinner profile to fit in here to hold these. But let's see if we can break that loose. There we go. Now our, our caliper comes with a new bracket and new hardware, so we, we don't have to clean these up or reuse them. Yeah, see this one just wants to spin, so let's get that in there. Now you can probably notice here that these brake lines are aftermarket, they're extended because this is lifted. I could probably set this on the ground. Yeah, almost. But if you have standard brake lines, most likely you'll have to hang this. So I'm just gonna grab this little caliper hanger and just hook this up out of the way. I'm just gonna hook it on the coil spring. Now I'm also going to, let me show you here real quick. Now this little uh, wheel speed ABS sensor here, just this, this line right here, I'm just gonna wiggle this out of its holder carefully and then just kind of put that out of the way over here because we need that access to get this bracket bolt off. Now here's where we would usually take off the inside pad, but it's it's gone. Man, that was really bad. You can see the caliper piston itself was just rubbing right metal to metal on the rotor. So that's metal to metal, but that's literally brake pad gone. I don't know, this must have ran quite a while, metal to metal. The outside pad here is of course worn down, but not completely gone. Now our brake caliper comes with new hardware and all this too, so I'm not worried about taking that off or of course you don't have to reuse that. Usually these clips come with a new set of pads as well. Let me put the camera over here and let's pull off these, these bolts here that hold the caliper bracket. This caliper is actually still in the way, so I'm gonna hang it down a little bit lower over here. Now that'll work. And these are a 21 millimeter, these lower bolts. I usually just like to keep one hand on that so it doesn't drop when you're taking that off. Now we do need to reuse these bolts and we'll clean those up and put some thread locker on them. Now I can't find the big rotor remover 9000 so just have to use the mini Tanya Harding version here. It's just a little, little hammer just to give that a whack. That should come off. There we go. Well, that's what's left of that rotor. That's pretty bad, but I've seen worse. Got some rust in here too. But what we'll do is clean this surface of the hub up so that our new rotor will sit flush against this. I'm just gonna use a little wire wheel, works pretty well. Just remember to wear some safety glasses if you're gonna do this, or you can just use a little wire brush too. Oh, I'd say that's good enough. I'm gonna put just a little bit of this anti-seize on the hub here. You don't need to get too crazy with this, but it will 
it will help keep that from getting stuck next time. Mostly around the center part is where it matters. All right, and then we can put the rotor on. Really need to wipe this down with some brake clean before we install it, so. All right, so here's our new caliper. I should call it a caliper assembly because it comes with the actual bracket. So I'm gonna take that off first. You have to take these off, Let's see if it's the same size. Yep, let's pull these out. There's the new, the new caliper bolt here already has some Loctite on the thread, so that's great. Okay, we're just gonna set the caliper aside for a second. Now here again is where you would clean this bracket up and clean and grease these slide pins, but since this is all newly rebuilt, I guess, it's already got the nice clean slide pins in there. So this is ready to mount. I'm just gonna put a little bit of thread lock on here. This is just the Permatex. I know we all just say Loctite, but this is the medium strength blue. And this will hold these guys in place. Now the torque spec on these main caliper bolts, what I found online was for 2010 is 120. I think on 2011 models, the spec changes to 100 foot pounds. I'm just gonna go with the 120 that I found online. Now these little hardware clips came with the new caliper. I probably should have put them on before putting this on. So if you're doing this, you might wanna do that first. The other thing though is I've noticed a lot of people are putting some caliper grease, uh, the slide pin grease or, or brake grease on the, uh, the little valley there just to prevent some corrosion or help prevent corrosion. This caliper looks like it's got some sort of a coating on it to protect it from corroding, but I don't think it's a bad idea. Just don't get any of this on the rotor. I'm just putting a little bit of this Sil Glide brake grease right there in those little channels underneath where these clips go. Again, that's more of a protectant than a lubricant. Now these clips, there's four of them. You just kind of line it up with the larger. See this, if you look at this little profile, see it's got this little part that kind of sticks out and this little part that's flat. The flat part goes towards the rotor and then you see this angle, that angle goes towards the center of the rotor as well, or the center of the hub. So that's how they go in. Just push them in place and that's good to go. Just kind of have to figure out which one goes where and then just they clip in place. All right, then we can put our brake pads on. Here we're going with the Wagner OEX. So I just like to put a little bit of the grease here, brake grease on these little ears and on the back of the pad or back of the shim. Just don't get any on the surface of the pad and then just kind of put these in a little bit of an angle and press them up against the rotor. Now same with the inside pad here. You'll notice this one has a little, the little squealer or noise maker. And in this vehicle, looks like it goes at the top. I don't know if originally it went on the top or the bottom, but that's how we're gonna have to do it because that's how these came. But same thing, just put a little bit of grease on that. Let's see if we can get that in. That's in place, good. Now here's the messy part. So it's a good idea to have a few rags or paper towels handy before we pull off that caliper line. Okay, so here is our old caliper with the brake line on here. I'm trying to get this a little bit, make this a little bit easier to, uh, there we go. Just trying to set this up so that I can pull this off and put it on the new one as quick as possible without making a huge mess. What I like to do is make sure that I've got all the right sizes and everything. And you can see in the new caliper here, see this is our little banjo style bolt or just the bolt that goes through that brake line. And it's got two copper flat washers. One goes on either side of the brake line fitting. Let's get this off and get it ready. And this is definitely a different size than what's on the vehicle. Okay, so we'll get one one on this side and then the other one ready to go on. But this is an 11 millimeter socket. So the old one or the one that's on there is a 15. But let's let's get this taken off and I'm just gonna try to break that free without making a 
huge mess or without causing a lot of stress on this brake line here. Now we're gonna leak some brake fluid, hopefully not too much. There we go. Okay, so we'll put the new one through and put our new washer on. And let's see if we can get that started at least. We don't lose too much fluid. The reason that there is still fluid in here is because I did top off the master cylinder. Just hoping that it would kind of gravity bleed itself and at least make it easier to bleed later. There we go. So we got it started at least. Let's hang up the new caliper for a second while we get it little bit of this mess cleaned up so we made a little mess but not too bad but we basically just got this one got this one started we'll get that torque down once I put it in place it's a lot easier to torque that once we put it in so all I have to do now is just position this over the new pads line that up and then we're gonna put in these new bolts like I said they already have some thread locker on them let's just get those started Let's get those zipped down for now. So this brake line bolt here, again, that's an 11 millimeter now. We need to torque that to 23 foot pounds. And that's gonna kind of crush these copper washers. There we go. And then these slide pin bolts are, it's a 13 millimeter. These are torqued to 26 foot pounds. And again, sometimes this inner slide pin, sometimes the slide pin will spin and you can throw a wrench on there and hold that stationary if needed. All right, so we're back together, but we do need to bleed the brakes now. So we need to get all that air out of the system. Okay, so now we need to bleed the brakes. I just realized that I didn't put this little sensor back in. So let's just do that. And then I've got uh, someone in the front seat that's gonna pump these up. And I've already done the backs and uh, we're now up at the front here. This is the front right. So go ahead and pump it up. So just having them hold the brake pedal down while we build some pressure here. We just got to open and close it. Go ahead, do it again. Okay, while they're holding that down, open that. And then tighten it back down. Pump it up. can see we're just getting clean clear fluid now no air so make sure that that's nice and snug and we're done I've already actually done all four I just came back to film this and show you but you the order you want to go is right rear left rear right front and then left front basically the you start farthest from the master cylinder when you do this just remember when you do a test drive when you've got new brakes just always before you take off even if you're not bleeding the brakes go ahead and step on the brake pedal several times to push the caliper piston back out pressing the pads up against the rotor where they need to be but that's pretty much everything I hope you liked the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind that does help me out I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up some of these parts and tools as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.